recorded on Saturday, and it started to a bit, but uh, the GoPro was acting weird, and like all of the audio that came through on that video was just my voice. You guys didn't hear the unit running, making any noises. It was weird. I was like, I'm not, I'm not feeling that. So thankfully, uh, I had to come back today to truly finish the job. Um, and all this is, is just a simple startup. So let me run you guys through it. We have a duplex. Two, two ton heat pump split systems. Um, I don't remember what uh, heat strip kit is in both of those. And there's no way for me to really tell. If I remember right, the, uh, the tag for them, I'd have to take off the blower panel and then the strips are on the back side of the blower motor on these models. I hate having to change them out. Um, but pretty much we were able to get that one going on Saturday and we tested it, made sure everything operated how it was supposed to. And then we weren't in my truck either. We were in my boss's new service truck. And when we started to do this one, my boss realized he didn't have a two heat one cool thermostat on his truck. So he was like, ah, oh, just come back and do it later. I was like, all right, cool. So now I'm here. Yeah. Got the Pro. I know some of you guys don't like them. I, 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 li I laugh at every comment I see where you guys like dog out pro thermostats because I show my boss I'm like I don't know what other people are having problems with in these things but we <laughs> we rarely have problems out of these thermostats um, like the, the couple odd stories everybody talks about I I don't understand but I refuse we he refuses to put in Honeywell's I don't like Honeywell's ever since I timed one and got a 12 minute delay on it I was like never again but just popped that on the wall I've got the return probe here and the supply probe over there. So if my CFM measurement is off, um, cause I'm gonna show you guys on measure quick what the system is doing. Um, I, I, I'm gonna bet it on that if the CFM looks awkward. I don't know how, how uh, measure quick works with reading CFM from the vents. It seemed like it did pretty good um, when you do it through the plenums, but I don't know about individual vents. So before I dive real quick into measure quick, um, more audio that was lost on the original footage from Saturday when I was here. I had to, to remove some wires from the back end of that breaker um, or I guess disconnect switch there to end up wiring the high bolt specifically for its own circuit because we've got two different disconnects here one for the uh, main power of the unit and the other one is for the the heat strips it could be reversed i'm not picking at literally individually um whenever i have to come by and like start up any of these tempstar package units i immediately look for like rub outs that i've had to face in the past and or things that, you know, just anything that could really cause a low voltage short. So the way they run some of the uh, defrost wires, you got to pay attention to those because I've had a couple of those give me rub outs. I've had this give me a rub out and I pulled it off this one because you can see a little bit of the charring there. It was rubbing up against this plate. It just, it was just sh like shoved right up against it. So I had to pull it off and I added this little zip tie to kind of back it off of there um, as well. I've had a lot of people, I'm not going to say a lot of people, a lot of systems where, you know, they had that little plate in there, the ICP units, where like you can stuff the thermostat wires. So people will give a whole lot of slack in the, in the thermostat wires themselves, and it'll be bunched up there. And when somebody goes to put a screw through there, it ends up hitting a wire. And during certain modes, whichever wire you hit causes a low volt short. So I eliminate that on the startups just by removing that little plate entirely I removed it on this one and on that one um, as well as this cover plate that goes right here I didn't know if it was really of any use but I wanted to make sure if somebody needed to check power um, you know they could just go right there for the checking the power going to the heat strips because um, these set of wire nuts just go straight to the bottom end of the contactor is that covering everything oh this unit uses superheat for cooling because this is the evaporator coil right here. 
that's the piston that it's attached to it and then it uses the TXV for the heat mode when this has to run in the, when it has to run in heat mode this is the metering device for heat mode now it's I, it's weird because when I work I work on the split systems that are Tempstar um, normally the outdoor condensing unit uses a piston for its metering device and then you'll have the TXV at the evap coil so it's interesting to see you know why why did they switch for the package units I wonder that um, it threw me off when we were trying to dial in or figure out the charge for that one I was like is it charged by super heater sub cool I was like it's a temp star it's probably freaking sub cool and I was like I see the TXV and then I look closer and I was like wait but there's a piston um, what else do I need to cover oh we were trying to figure out uh, the blower speed, if we needed to raise or lower the blower speed on that one. And just judging by the pressures on this before I started the camera, it's doing the exact same thing as that one's doing where it's showing signs of low airflow. But like I go inside and the airflow around throughout the vents just seems fine. Coming out of the vents, so I think the issue is going into the vents, like the return, something's wrong with the return. Um, but all I can do is just make note of that to my boss, like, hey, this is what's going on. So if you're ever working on these and you only see the <coughs> the defrost control board right here, your fan motor speed taps are going to be right here. And your black is going to be your cool. This is a two-ton unit. Um, it's coming from the factory in the low speed. And then the orange and the pink right here are your medium high, medium low speeds. So it's already come factory on low. Um, but let me go ahead and get the tablet loaded up so I can show you guys what's going on here. Doo -doo 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 -doo. It is showing a piston. Oh, didn't mean to tap that. Pressure wise, we're looking a little bit on the low side as far as what Measure Quick is expecting of us to be at. Um, again, like look at this the CFM per ton right there optimized for warm humid climates but then if I scroll through uh, where is it at where is it at where is it at ah, right there so it's showing like it's below the allowable range I don't know where it's pulling that 400 from but I can just tell by the superheat alone uh, the system is showing you know again it's just showing signs of some some airflow issues not saying it's terrible you know like it's it's not gonna work at all um, and I already talked to my boss about it on that unit. Did he want us to adjust the charge? He said I would. You know, we'll see if it's if it starts to cause an issue because um, everything else with the system is fine. I mean, the temp split right now, I believe that is a yep, 31 degree split. It's a little on the higher side, but then again, it's it's having some return air issues. Is what I'm guessing I mean I could probably go in there and pull that filter off the off the wall and you or show you guys the size of the return in general and you guys would be like oh yeah that's it for sure um, but other than that I mean other than the, re the the super heat everything else for the system seems fairly fine so let me go show you guys what the return looks like I believe it's 14 by 20 is the size of these filters. Do, 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 do. Yep, 14 by 20. And nice little area right here that, with a 12 inch tap going through there. And there's not a whole lot of. No, that's. That's, that's slapping that thing up against there. I would love to do a static pressure test. I'm not gonna lie. But I don't know where I would do one on this one without drilling a whole bunch of holes through the through the panels. Um, I I will admit I've never done one on these one on these heat pumps. So somebody let me know because the evap coil splits this right here. The return is right over here supply is here so would I just be able to get away with sticking a pro uh, static pressure pedo tube thingy through right here like just drill a little hole through here and then put one on this side of the evap coil 
Oh, well, no, because that wouldn't work. That wouldn't work. Never mind. That's stupid. That's stupid because I'm still on both sides of the blower motor technically. So, yeah. Without crawling up under the house and actually hooking it up to the ductwork, there's no way to do one here. I'm fairly certain of it. I think. My brain's still thinking about it. I'll be thinking about this until I get home, probably, if there's a way to do it. But what you guys saw me do on the other unit over there um because i ended up having to do a good bit more over there than i did here i had to equip the drain lines and it is a pull it is a negative pressure evaporator coil so i did have to add a uh, p-trap i don't know why it's not it's not draining right now because it definitely should be Even pulling down on the trap, yeah, I'm not getting any water out of there. I didn't prime the trap though, so that could be an issue too. So when I when the whole system shuts off, it might water gravity feed its way down there. Um, oh, never mind, I lied. There we go. There's the water right there. Steady stream too. As as I pull the camera away and it starts <laughs> just bubbling, just trickling. Um, this one I had to dig a little bit out into the dirt. The trap is right here and it just comes out and this unit's not on inside, but I did make sure that I did have enough pitch coming downhill so that way the, uh, the water isn't stagnant in there, but both identical systems. We did not run the whips. The electricians did. This was not the way the top of the unit looked saturday and also they had like wood paneling on the outside so i think the people coming to put the vinyl siding up just tore everything off and now the tops of our units look like crap um then you can even see where the electricians just manhandled their tools across our equipment i man i just, it's just sad somebody knocked off the temp star sign but other than that guys I'd say we're all good here. I'm gonna get my probes off, my clamps off, um, put my stickers up there, the label makers for the company, and be out of here. Give your honest critique about the install, boys. Give your honest critiques. And there's my sticker down at the bottom. Ugh, we'll grab my pros from inside. It's time to go home. Very easy day today. Uh, we've gotten cooler temperatures this week, so we're not really balls to the wall as we have been. Um, I think the high today was like 86, and then with a little bit of extra humidity, it, was, it felt a little bad, but it wasn't so bad to where people, you know, were calling, were ringing up the phones like crazy, so... I'm on my way back to the shop right now. Um, with these little startups, I, I, the only personal touch I really get to add on these uh, are pretty much anything that the installers left behind. And, you know, they only left it behind because the job couldn't be completed, you know, when, when they put the system in. We waited for like a week or two on the electricians to get out there. Uh, I didn't mind putting in the drain. That really wasn't an issue for me. Uh, the thermostat, I wonder why the thermostat wasn't up, but I don't think drywall might have been up by the time uh, we installed the system. So sometimes when I go to these startups, I got to do more than just turning on the unit and you know checking the pressures and whatnot. I'm normally just adding the final touches. So. As far as the refrigerant goes on that system, I understand that I probably, I, I don't know, I feel like I should have adjusted the charge a little bit, but considering my boss gave the green light on Saturday when we did the other package unit, I just said skip it. It's be, be the same way with this one. Um, everything on Measure Quick when I was hitting the, uh, the little fault icon in the top corner was telling me 
that I, you know, had, was showing signs of an overcharge or low airflow issue. So I kind of, kind of both situations. I believe that return is the right size. Could be wrong. Uh, what else? 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 I think that's it. I think that's all I wanted to talk about, really. Oh, thanks to everybody who's been uh, sending in their proof of subscription and uh, just messaging me on Instagram, emailing me. I, the, the ending of the giveaway or accepting entries for the giveaway is tomorrow at 6. Let's just say tomorrow, to Wednesday at 6. Wednesday the 11th at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I think this is. Uh, and with that said, I'll probably announce the winner on the next video after that. I will be have contacted the winner already, but I'll just let everybody know like, hey, so and so won from this area. Thanks for everybody who participated. Uh, so with that being said, I will catch you guys on the next video. Hope you have a great rest of your week. Later.